Yo, welcome back to YGO Podcast. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button, then what the hell are you still doing here, man? Seriously. It literally only takes one second. Go ahead and hit that button. Make sure you use our promo code YGOPod5 on trollandtoe.com to get 5% off on purchases. And let's go ahead and get into the video, guys. Um, as you probably already know by now, Konami has dropped an unexpected ban list on us during a YCS. Man, that shit's kind of wild if you think about it. Um, Konami be wild in for sure. And the strangest part about this list is that we kind of expected it, right? We kind of expected almost every part of it. And the rest of it is just kind of boring. So I guess you could say that it it's a boring list in some regards, right? If we take a look at the forbidden category, there are some items inside here that we expected. We expected number 89, Diablosis the Mind Hacker. And for most of us who really understood how the game is being played, we understood that branded expulsion was probably going to hit the list. However, we had some interesting additions to the forbidden category, which I find uh, unexpected. We have a pointer of the Red Lotus, uh, which as I recall, this card was limited to one um, on a previous ban list. Then we have Super Heavy Samurai Scarecrow, which is extremely strange. Um, not strange as in, you know, um, we didn't know what it was doing. We knew what it was doing, but um, strange is in the fact that it was just hit really fast. Uh, most of the time, Konami will allow a strategy to <laughs> continue on until it becomes a serious disruption in the meta. And then we have Cyberstein as well. So it's a lot of times uh, Konami is very slow to move on uh, these things, but we see Konami jumping on on them. I mean, we can expect that there's some degenerate things going to happen with Cyberstein. And we also expected, you know, the generic, the uh, degeneracy with Super Heavy Samurai Scarecrow. Um, but the appointer of the Red Lotus, kind of interesting, don't you think? And for the limited category, Blaster, the Dragon Ruler of Infernos, we already expected that card to come back to one. We knew that that was going to happen. However, what we didn't know what was going to happen was quite a few of these other cards. Uh, Nichiria Sacred Tree, that is a big hit on a strategy that was pretty much maybe about tier one and a half, especially with the Runic cards. Um, it was just kind of a strange hit. I understand that the card itself is not once per turn. And we know how much Konami does not like cards that are uh, not once per turn. And then you have Purely de Delicious Memory, which, in my opinion, that card <laughs> is uh, pretty busted as well. Uh, but we didn't, I wasn't expecting to see this card hit the ban list so soon. Cash Tira Rise Heart, um, that's kind of in the same category as Blaster Dragon Ruler of Infernos. We knew that Cash Tira was going to receive a hit. We just didn't know to what degree, but a Rise Heart going to one, that would make a lot of sense. What doesn't make sense are the last three that I did not mention on this list. Dinlong, first of the Yang Zing, Cyframe Gear Gamma, and Math Mech Circular. Now, I'm pretty sure if you're a meta contender and you play uh, very competitively, you understand maybe one of these, Cyframe Gear Gamma, right? You might be able to understand, say, okay, you know, uh, Gamma can be disruptive, especially if you're going first or whatever the case may be to push your plays through. Uh, but Math Mech Circular and then Dinlong, first of the Yang Zing, those cards uh, Ding Long, I don't even think needed to come back. Uh, Ding Long it enables degeneracy, in my opinion, and I think that it's going to see itself back on the ban list very, very soon. Mathmex Circular, I don't even think Mathmex had a time to really shine. Uh, they've been splashed into a lot of other cyber strategies just kind of as an engine to make the cybers, which is already a struggling uh, archetype. If you, you know, you know, the struggle is extremely real if you're a cybers player. Um, and when you have a good actual Cybers deck, it seems that Konami wants to uh, beat you guys down as much as possible. However, it being limited to one is not going to kill Math Mech. It just kind of slows the consistency down. So pretty interesting as far as the limited category goes. I think we can agree that the semi-limited category is pretty wild, especially for this list. The semi-limited category is historically an underused category that I think Konami has just been seriously been shrinking over the time. There was many semi-limited cards at one point in time on the list, and 
it really didn't do very much for consistency. There's a lot of debate that goes along the lines of whether a card should be at zero, three, or, or, or at one. So banned, at one, or un, unlimbed. The semi-limited category has been struggling. So this category is very strange. And this, I mean, the updates for this category are unexpected. I don't think any ban lists, including my own, uh, expected anything to be semi-limited. So when they put Herald of the Orange Light, Lightning Storm, Engage, Sprite Starter, Runic Fountain, yeah, I mean, those are just some of the ca that I mean, that's absolutely crazy. And then you have Cash Tira Unicorn. So now you have one less unicorn and one less Arise Heart for the Cash Tira deck with no other hits seemingly to any of the strategy. So in essence, it really doesn't matter because Cash Tira is still going to be tier one with one less unicorn. It doesn't stop the deck from doing what it needs to do because there's no ban to birth. There's no ban to a lot of the different cards. Cash Tier is still gonna be tier one this format. Uh, you might see a little bit more of uh, Drytron, especially now that you have uh, two orange light, you might see a little bit more there. Uh, you might also see, you're definitely gonna see probably a little bit more consistency added to Sky Striker. Um, I don't really see any consistency reduced down in Sprite by limiting or semi-limiting Sprite Starter and then you still have three blue and three jet, you're still gonna be able to consistently make those plays. Runic Fountain being at two, most people play two anyway, so I don't really see a point in that. And Lightning Storm is mostly a side deck card, and most people usually only gonna play two, or if they do play three, it's usually in the side deck. Most people don't wanna see three Lightning Storm in their hand. That's what we, can we all agree that that's probably a bad hand? So for this category, as you can see historically, and what we've also been used to is that this category is definitely not useful. Okay, for the unlimited category, this is very interesting. I like this one. Uh, I think that Konami had some good picks on here that had been on here for ages and they needed to come off for sure. Samsara Lotus uh, being one of them. That card has been either restricted to one or banned for almost its entire existence. It is just essentially a treeborn frog. It just comes back from the grave and it deals a thousand damage to the owner. So uh, it's been uh, quite a while since that card has been on the list. Gen X Ally Birdman. This card is just bounce one card or bounce one monster back to your hand, special summon it from your hand to the field. He is a level three dark tuner. So he was very useful at one point just because special summons came in, you know, very rare form, especially in the form of bouncing one monster to your hand and special summon another. So uh, he was, I believe, limited to one for the longest time. I'm glad he's unlimited now. He hardly does anything. I don't foresee him doing any type of shenanigans in the future. Blackwing Steam the Cloak. This one could bite Konami at some point, especially if we're going to be going into a link heavy uh, uh, deck or a link heavy strategy comes out with Steam the Cloak. That token is probably going to cause a lot of issues. Uh, Spiral Quick Fix. This has been on the list for forever, for ages. Uh, I do think that Quick Fix being at three really doesn't um, add any consistency to Spiral as is, considering that, you know, you still have Master Plan as banned. Uh, you still have Resort, I believe, either banned or at one. I don't remember. Um, and the deck itself just cannot function in that in its current shape or form. Uh, Recital Starling coming off the list to, um, to three definitely is very interesting. Um, I do want to see more. I think that's going to make some of uh, the bird plays. Maybe you might see some bird decks pop up here and there, uh, kind of in the rogue ca uh, category. They, they do need it. Draco Faceoff. This card has been forever uh, <laughs> at one, just about. So I'm glad to see it come off the list. I don't think we're going to see anything uh, spectacular come from it. I do would like to see some Draco decks pop up here and there, but I really don't see anything. And then we have multi roll. It kind of seems like Konami is pushing a lot of striker, right? 
Uh, and this is a part of their plan. This has always been a part of their plan. So the ban list is not for the players. Okay, if you're not if you're not familiar with the way that Yu-Gi-Oh works, the ban list is not for the players. It is for sales. That's what it's for. So the more striker support, we're getting all kinds of extra striker support. The more support that we get for Sky Striker, the more stuff comes off the list. You know why? Because Stri Sky Striker sells and stuff like Dragon Maid sell. All right. Before when Yu-Gi-Oh was a kind of like a, I don't know, um, the artwork was a little bit more dark, a little bit more gritty, maybe even, you know, slightly more cartoonish. Um, before we got these anime characters, you could you could honestly say that the game was a little bit more about building creative decks. Now, in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, we have literally anime decks, and we've got all the anime weebs that buy the decks, especially waifu decks. You've got, you know, um, just, and then you've got generic anime guy who's in outer space. Um, I'm looking at you, you know, uh, whatever the hell your name is, guy, I'll probably pull the card up right here. Yeah, and, it's just it's it's absolutely changed i'm not gonna say ridiculous because i'm not gonna shit on you guys like i'm not gonna shit on anybody who likes it and i love anime myself but i do notice a change in the target audience so konami is definitely targeting like anime watchers uh people who like waifu stuff and you know and they're doing less cards that are just kind of like free agent cards that's what you guys call them nowadays uh, we just called them regular Yu-Gi-Oh cards at one point. So, yeah. So what do you guys think about the ban list so far? Let me hear your comments down below. I read them all. Please hit a like on this video. Share this video. Do whatever you can to get this video out there. I'm trying to be a little bit more low key. Not one of those freaking mouth opening, gaping Team Sam, everybody else's loving the ban list type of person. Right. So uh, that's going to be the biggest thing uh, about this uh, is that uh, I'm trying to just get this stuff out there, man. I'm trying to get you guys the information as efficiently as possible. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.